Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, since Poppy Playtime Forever was released a couple of days ago, I've had loads of questions about Create Mode. So today, I'll be answering the most common questions to hopefully help you guys out. Now, there's a lot to cover, so I'll add bookmarks down in the description. So if this is something specific you want to know, you can jump to that point. So starting with the basics, the first thing is how to unlock Build Mode. To unlock the Creation Suite and start building your own maps, you need to complete the Story Chapter first. Once you've completed the Story Chapter, you'll be able to open the door to the Creation Suite and start building your own maps. Next up is how to add Huggy Wuggy to your game and customize him. Okay, so to add Huggy Wuggy or another NPC, first of all, click on Stamper, then go to Essentials and select NPC. Position this on the map wherever you want Huggy Wuggy to spawn. Next, to change his settings, click on Config and you'll be given these options. So you've got Kill Radius, which is how close the player needs to be to Huggy Wuggy to get killed. The FOV angle is the angle that Huggy Wuggy can see. So if you leave it at 150 and the player is stood behind him, then he shouldn't be able to see you. Then you've got options like sprint speed, chase speed, view distance, and walk speed. You can also make it so Huggy Wuggy doesn't chase the player. To change this, click on aggressive and change it to disabled. Now if you have more than one skin, you can change it from Huggy Wuggy to one of the others. To do that, click on skin and then you can select whichever ones you have available. Now I've bought the Killy Willy Game Pass, so I can have Killy Willy instead of Huggy Wuggy. Now if you've bought some of the other skins like the Golden Huggy Wuggy or the Red Huggy Wuggy, those can only be used in one place at a time. But if you have the Killy Willy Game Pass, you can use it in as many places as you like. Now if you want Huggy Wuggy to patrol in a certain area, then you can use patrol nodes. To do that, go into Stamper, go to Essentials, and find the patrol node. Now for this example, I want Huggy Wuggy to just stay in this area. So I'm going to place four down in a big rectangle, and that will mean Huggy Wuggy will just keep walking around those four until he spots a player. The next question I've been asked is, what is the gumball machine for? Now this is really simple, this is literally just where the players will respawn when they die. Now of course, I know this thing is huge, but you do have to have it in your game, otherwise players won't be able to respawn in. But that is it, that is all the gumball machine is for, it's literally just where the players will respawn. The next question is, how do I change the walls, floors and ceilings? Now this has been really buggy, but apparently the devs have now fixed it. So to change the decorations, all you do is go onto tile mode, hover over the section that you'd like to change, and then click on the paint bucket. Here you have the options for floor, walls, and ceiling. Now let's say, for example, I want to change my floor to concrete. Then I click on floor, select concrete, and then I can change the color by clicking this. So for this, I'm going to go for blue, and then click confirm. Now if you only want to change the floor, but not the walls or ceiling, Uncheck these two boxes. Now it'll only change the thing that's checked. Once you've set it up right, click on the section you'd like to change and then it should change color. You can do the exact same thing for the walls and ceiling. So I'm gonna click on wall, select brick, and I'm gonna make it this kind of red color. Again, click on it and it should change. Same for the ceiling, I'm gonna go for bubble and I'm gonna select a yellowish color. Click on it and there you go. Now there was a huge bug where it was just making everything black no matter what you selected, but apparently the devs have now fixed that. But if you have that problem, the only way I found to fix it is to leave the game and rejoin it and then it should work. The next question I've been asked a lot is how do I publish my game and make it public? Now this is really easy, you just have to test it first. Now the reason for this is to make sure that players can actually escape your game. So once you've got everything set up the way you'd like it, click on test and when you escape you should see this pop-up saying test successful, would you like to publish now? So just click yes and there you go, your game is now public and other people can play it. The next question I've been asked loads is how do I make more than one game? Now unfortunately for this you do have to buy a game pass. To buy it, go into the shop and it's this UGC expansion which currently costs 299 Robux. Now if you have that game pass, go into the console and where it has the list of games, click on the plus icon and this will make a brand new place. Okay, so the next thing I've been asked a lot is how do I add dialogue? Now this one is really simple, all you do is go into Stamper, click on Essential and scroll across until you find the dialogue trigger. Now whenever a player touches this, that's when the dialogue will pop up. So place it in the map wherever you'd like the dialogue to pop up and then select it and click Config. Just click in this top box and type in whatever text you'd like to pop up. To make sure it works, click on Test and then as you can see when the player touches it, it'll pop up with your message. So the next thing I've been asked loads about is these three items. So you've got AND gate, OR gate, or NOT gate. Now at the moment, these have been disabled by the developers because they were too buggy. But just to give you an idea of what they're for, the AND gate is if you want two puzzles to open one door. So if you wanted players to have to complete two different puzzles to open one door, you would use the AND gate. If you had two puzzles and you wanted the players to only figure out one of them to open the door, then you could use the OR gate. And the NOT gate would be used if you wanted players to complete a puzzle to close a door. 
Now, like I said, at the moment, these things don't work, but when they do work, I'll do a full tutorial showing different examples on how you can use them. Now, this question has been asked so many times, how to make a chase scene. Now, at the moment, unfortunately, you can't really do it. And the main reason for that is right now, Huggy Wuggy walks through stuff. So because he can walk through walls, doors, or anything else that you throw in his way, you can't really do a chase scene as such at the moment. But once that's been fixed, I'll do a video showing a couple of different examples on how you could do a chase scene. Next thing is how to make stairs. Now, unfortunately, there aren't any preset stairs in the game. But you can use your imagination and you can use some other different blocks to create your own stairs. So if you wanted to build more than one floor, you could do something like this. So for this example, I'm going to use the wooden block rectangle. Just position it down somewhere, rotate it, and place it slightly under the floor. While it's selected, you can click on the duplicate button, move it across and slightly up, and then you just keep repeating this until you have a set of stairs. Then you can use other parts like walls and flip them over so they're flat and create floors for a second level. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is something really cool that I think not many people know about, and that is that you can add your own music and sound effects. Now to do that, go into the stamper and search for speaker. Then you can click on config and you'll see these options. So you've got plays when powered, max distance, looped, and sound ID. Now it's already preset with some poppy playtime music, and this is what it looks like. This is a really great way to add some atmosphere to your games. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is a really cool trick that you can do with these speakers, which is create an audio jump scare. So again, you're going to want another speaker, but this time we need a jump scare sound effect. So to do that, I'm going to go into Roblox Studio and I'm going to open up the toolbox and just search for jump scare. Once you've found one that you like, right click it and click copy asset ID. Head back to the game, click on the speaker that you want to play it, click config, go down to sound ID and then paste it into this box. Now if you don't have Roblox Studio or you just want to use the one that I'm using, this is the sound ID. Once you've done that, click confirm. Now for a jump scare, you don't want it to keep looping over and over again, you just want it to play once. So to do that, click on looped and click disabled. That way it will only play once. Then scroll up to the top where it says play when powered and make sure you click enabled. Next, we need something to trigger it. So for this example, I'm gonna use a door with a hand scanner. So for this, you'll need a door, a power block and a hand scanner. And then you just need to connect them all up. So click on power and go from the power block to the hand scanner, from the hand scanner to the door, and then from the power block to the speaker. So if you've done it exactly like I've done it, what should happen is when you open the door with the hand scanner, it should trigger the audio jump scare. Now let's test it out. Okay, so I do the hand scan. Door opens and there's the jump scare sound. I think this is a really cool feature that not many people know about and I think it'll add some really good jump scares to the game. Now the next thing I've been asked is how do you change the name of your game? Now this is really simple. Go back to the lobby, head back inside to this terminal, find the game that you want to change the name of and just type it in this box. Once you've typed it, hit enter and you should get this prompt. Just click yes that you're happy with it and there you go, you've named your game. Now I also get loads of questions asking about the different power items, but I've already made a video about that. But if you guys haven't seen it, I'll link it down in the description. So guys, that covers the most common questions that I've been asked. But if there's anything I've missed, let me know down in the comments. But if that video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, stay mega.